In writing a 365-page book targeting the Church of Scientology, Lawrence Wright sought out a tiny group of disgruntled ex-members led by this man, expelled from the church for financial misconduct, deception, ineptitude, and violence. Nearly all of Wright's sources were dismissed from the church for similar offenses, including embezzlement, financial wrongdoing, sexual misconduct, physical abuse, and severe violations of church doctrine. Yet these are the individuals Lawrence Wright uses to impugn the character of the church and its leader, a man responsible for a worldwide religion and its unprecedented expansion, and under whose stewardship the church's social betterment programs have become the largest non-governmental anti-drug and human rights campaigns on earth. But in writing his so-called expose on Scientology, Lawrence Wright's sources were far from credible, and Wright knew it. Their allegations so far-fetched that a federal judge and an appeals court dismissed them as baseless. Lawrence Wright ignored that. And when the church provided thousands of pages of evidence documenting the falsehood of those claims, Lawrence Wright continued to present the allegations as fact. When asked in a journalist forum, do you believe that journalism can lead to truth? Wright had this to say. Truth is one of those subjective terms that are pointless to get too tied up about. Wright's book was released in January 2013, but failed to generate reader interest. Still, it found itself immediately steeped in controversy about the veracity of its claims, so much so that the book's publisher would not release it in Britain, Ireland, Canada, or Australia because of their libel laws. The chances of losing a lawsuit were simply too great. Now, documentary filmmaker Alex Gibney has taken Lawrence Wright's book at its word without question or examination. I, I, I utterly trusted Larry. I wasn't looking for, you know, holes in his story. Over the two years Gibney quietly worked on his documentary, he never once contacted the church, visited a church, or spoke to any of its members. His documentary was in the can before he even mentioned it to them. And to this day, Gibney refuses to reveal his allegations to the church. Let's take a closer look at Wright and Gibney's sources. Meet Graham Barry a small-time California lawyer who filed dozens of frivolous lawsuits and claims against the church. As he told the court, my agenda basically is to bite Scientology in the butt and to cause it as much grief as possible. The declarations Barry submitted contained so many wild and unfounded conspiracy theories that he was repeatedly reprimanded from the bench. Here's what one judge said. I am not going to let you submit reams and reams of declarations with totally insupportable allegations. Court documents show Barry's tactics include paying sums totaling $17,000 for a known church attacker to sign an affidavit containing false allegations against the church, and forging testimony by writing another 11 pages into a witness's court declaration without her knowledge. That's perjury. Here's what she told the court after she found out. I gave no authorization for my declaration to be changed after I sent the signed copy of it to Mr. Barry. Becoming more and more unbalanced, Barry left his job and hung out his own shingle to fabricate a series of bizarre conspiracy lawsuits against the church. In one of them suing the church and its leader, Graham Barry went so far as to name the director of the IRS, the National Security Advisor, the Secretaries of State, Treasury and Commerce, and the President of the United States as co-defendants. After that suit was thrown out, he changed a few words and refiled an amended suit. Then another, then another. Over the years, not only has Barry suffered defeat after defeat, the courts ordered him to pay the church more than $100,000 in sanctions. In 1999, the court finally labeled Graham Barry a vexatious litigant for his relentless abuse of the legal system and forbade him from ever filing another lawsuit without court approval with these words. 
If there is such a thing on God's green earth as a vexatious litigant, you, sir, sadly are in. And when the California State Bar suspended his license three years later, Barry threw himself at the mercy of the court, citing depression and alcoholism. But the plea for leniency backfired, and he was ordered into psychiatric treatment at his own expense. A further investigation into Barry's private life goes well beyond the troubles he reported to the bar. It reveals allegations of pedophilia, perversion, and predatory sexual behavior. One young man stating in court documents, Barry said that in exchange for representing me, I would have to have sex with him four times. Lawrence Wright is fully aware that Graham Barry's documented character and bizarre court actions make his credibility virtually worthless. That's why Wright leaves the name Graham Barry out of his book entirely and just refers to him as an attorney. Graham Barry is also the legal counsel and highly vocal supporter of this man and the small group of anti-Scientologists Lawrence Wright uses to malign the church. Even though his name is not mentioned, Graham Barry and his deceptions are spread throughout Lawrence Wright's book as fact. For instance, Barry represents this self-confessed perjurer who tells a fictitious story about being a Scientologist forced to comply with a bank robbery in order to get a debt paid to the church. But Gary Scarf not only never was a Scientologist, there was no debt and there never was such a robbery. He later recanted the story under oath as a complete fabrication. But it appears on this page of Lawrence Wright's book as a fact. Remember those fraudulent allegations Graham Barry paid $17,000 for? They're right here, also presented by Lawrence Wright as fact. And that's just a few of the discredited claims and accusations connected to Graham Barry throughout Lawrence Wright's book. And Wright, Alex Gibney, and head of HBO documentaries and family programming Sheila Nevins know all about it. But their audience doesn't know and won't know. In future segments, we're going to show you more of Lawrence Wright's sources. Remember this guy? The ringleader of that tiny group Lawrence Wright befriended and used to tell false stories about his former religion? Shut the fuck up. I'm he was dismissed right and expelled from the church for criminal activities. That's criminal, as in felony. His resume also includes episodes of shoving, kicking, punching, and extreme violence, and a honeymoon night spent in jail. But Lawrence Wright doesn't reveal any of that or any other sort of detail about this man. You'll also meet those this man calls his posse, such as the guy he nearly killed, who he now calls his best good buddy. This guy deserted his children and ruthlessly attacked his estranged wife. The thief who used to ride shotgun with the ringleader on his punching sprees. Admitted accomplices in a scheme to suborn perjury, getting others to lie under oath. And another Lawrence Wright source, the lady expelled from the church for having sexual relations with someone she was ministering to, a violation of professional conduct in any church. You'll meet her too. The paid tabloid source and his wife, whose frivolous lawsuits were repeatedly thrown out of federal court and the couple ordered to pay the church $40,000 and the writer who took advantage of his Scientology connections to take $5 million for writing scripts he never completed. Lawrence Wright and Alex Gibney could have shown you the truth about Scientology, for this is Scientology Today. A rapidly expanding religion with new churches opening by the month throughout the world. But instead of showing you this, Wright and Gibney have chosen to give you this man. Shut the fuck up! And his tiny group of followers. That's right, this guy the is the up. leader of all Lawrence Wright's sources. Shut the they fuck are interconnected, up. each of them corroborating the other's false stories and lies. Some for big bucks. All of them handpicked the to populate up. the story Lawrence Wright and Alex Gibney want to sell. Shut the fuck up. 
Lawrence Wright, Alex Gibney, and executive producer Sheila Nevins know full well who these people really are. But you won't see that on HBO. Shut the fuck up. 